guys, this is Donuts Movies, and today I'll be giving you 10 World of Warcraft unfinished stories. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. Gilneas, one of the seven human kingdoms, was isolated after the Second War by the Grey Main Wall. While they were prosperous at first, everything started to go wrong later on. The Worgen curse was spreading and the civil war and on top of that a cataclysm happened which broke the wall and allowed the Forsaken to invade them. The offensive was very successful, however the alliance was able to retake Gilneas city. Due to the betrayal of Godfrey and the death and resurrection of Sylvanas, she was forced to retreat. Ever since then the fate of this zone is unknown, however Varian did say after the siege of Orgrimmar that he will cleanse Gilneas and keep Sylvanas at bay. Nothing has happened yet, but Legion does seem to have the potential to finally continue this story. Hakkar the Soul Flayer is one of the most destructive creatures on Azeroth. In the past, he manipulated the Gurubashi trolls in an attempt to summon himself into the material plane through sacrifice. This led to a civil war, and before the ritual was finished, his followers were defeated and exiled. Ever since then, there have been many new summoning attempts and one was even successful in Vanilla. He was defeated, but that didn't stop the efforts of his followers. The latest summoning of Hakkar was in Cataclysm, where Jindo tried to not just summon him, but also absorb the power for himself. After his defeat in Zul'Gurub, Hakkar breaks free and says that he will deal with us mortals another time. There were no signs of the Soul Flayer ever since, but knowing Hakkar, he isn't just going to abort his plan. Have you forgotten what I can do? Megata is the Elder Crone of the Grim Totem tribe. Her most important appearance was in the Shattering novel when she poisoned Garrosh's axe and indirectly killed Kieran Bloodhoof. After that, she has led a sneak attack and took over Thunderbluff, forcing Bane, the son of Kieran, to retreat. With the help of Terramore and the goblins, Thunderbluff was retaken and the Grim Totem were defeated. Bane offered mercy to the ones who would leave the tribe, while Megata and her loyal followers were banished. Her exile has not ended too well, as at first they were attacked by the Horde and then forced to retreat, and in the meantime Megata was captured by the Twilight's Hammer Clan. However, that was a mistake for them as Megata not only defeated the Twilight Hammer Clan, but also gained access to several powerful artifacts including the Doomstone, a device capable of amplifying elemental power and destroying an entire zone. We haven't seen her ever since and we don't know what her future plans are, but she definitely has the power to strike at any moment. Nomragan was once the capital of the Gnome race, all until the Trog invasion. In a defense attempt, Gelbin, their leader, listened to his advisor Thermoplug and radiated the entire city. Unfortunately, it didn't affect the Trogs as much as it corrupted his people, turning them into leper gnomes. Only later did Gelbin find out that this was all a scheme made by his once trusted advisor, Magjanir Thermoplug. Around the time of Cataclysm, the gnomes launched an assault on Nomrigan and the operation was successful and Thermoplug was killed. Ever since then, they have been battling the remnants of the leper gnomes and clearing out the city. Nomrigan hasn't been mentioned since Cataclysm, even though it was most likely freed by now. Gelbin did make further appearances in the novels, but the story of his city still remains unfinished. During the Shattering novel, Magni Bronzebeard was presented with an old Dwar tablet. He wasn't aware of the exact ritual, but he volunteered to do it as it was his duty as a creation of the Titans. The procedure ended up being way more literal than they initially thought and he was turned into a crystal statue. This was actually the process that allowed the Earthen to turn into material they were originally created from by the Titans. Ever since then, Magni has just been standing around in the old Iron Forge. His future is uncertain, but it is speculated that he could return to serve the Titans once again in a time of need. 
With the Lich King's defeat, the Alliance and the Horde began a crusade to claim the city of Enderhall. This was a three-way war as the Alliance and the Horde fought each other while the Scourge was also there holding their ground. When the Scourge is defeated, Koltira, the Horde commander, and Tessarian, the Alliance commander, enter a truce. Now, Koltira and Tessarian have a long history as they had a very close bond once when they were both serving the Lich King as Death Knights. Unfortunately, human farmers form a militia and still attack the Forsaken, disobeying Tessarian and thus breaking the truce. War starts again and this time Silvana shows up and raises undead, resulting in a Forsaken victory. After the battle, Silvanus confronts Koltira and scolds him for being weak. A portal to Undercity is opened, he is pulled in by a hooked chain where Sylvanas will make him a servant of the Horde and rid him of the compassion he has for Tessarian. We haven't seen Kultira Deathweaver ever since and his current state is unknown. Medan is the son of Garona and Medivh, meaning that he has Orc, Draenei and human roots. His mother, unconfident in her sanity, gave up Medan to Meryl Felstorm, a member of the original Terrestrial Council. Quite some time later, with the guidance of his grandmother Agewin, Medan decided to reform the Council of Terrestrial. He gathered members of various classes, while in the meantime he ventured into Karazhan and learned more about his father Medivh. After that, he fought Cho'Gal and defeated him, even though Cho'Gal was alive later on in World of Warcraft. We haven't seen Medan since then and we don't know whether he will return at some point as a guardian. So far Blizzard has said that he won't show up in the game for quite some time and we have also seen Khadgar wielding Aetish, the staff that was supposed to be in Medan's possession. This means that either Medan was fully scrapped or his story still remains unfinished. When going to the alternate Draenor, Admiral Taylor established a garrison in the Spiders of Iraq. At one point, Vrantian paid him a visit and before he left, he told Taylor to keep an eye out for a file, one of his men. He was right as the file turned out to be a traitor and he had converted the entire garrison into undead, including Taylor. His motives were uncertain as he apparently serves the Dark One, which we still haven't learned anything about. It is speculated that Vratian played a part in this, but we haven't learned anything ever since, meaning that the Dark One and the final storyline still remains a mystery. Keltuzad was once a mage of the Kirin Tor. His curiosity for forbidden magics led him to Northrend as he heard the call of the Lich King. Not long after, he became the founder of the Cult of the Damned and the one responsible for spreading the plague through Lordaeron. In the process, he was killed, but later on resurrected when Arthas turned into a Death Knight. Following Arthas' departure to Northrend, Keltuzad was left to control the Plaguelands from Nexremes, his necropolis. During Vanilla, he was defeated, which led to him relocating to Northrend during Wrath of the Lich King. He was defeated again in the new Nexremes, but was never actually killed as his phylactery remained intact. Since Keltuzad is a lich, he can only manifest his physical form through the phylactery and unless it is destroyed, the lich cannot be killed. His current state remains unknown and he will most likely return at some point in the future. Bolvar IV Dragon was once a paladin and he served as a regent of Stormwind in the absence of Varian Vryn. During Wrath of the Lich King, he commanded the Alliance expedition and he led the Wrathgate siege. While confronting the Lich King, the Forsaken Putris had betrayed both factions, launching deadly gas on the battlefield. This devastating attack sucked the life out of Bolvar, but that was not the end to his story. He was imprisoned by the Scourge and Artis mercilessly tortured him in an attempt to bend him to his will. After the death of Artis, Bolvar sacrificed himself, equipping the Helm of Domination in order to become the Lich King. There were no further mentions of Bolvar since then, but we do know that he is still out there and if there is ever a new Northern expansion, Bolvar 4 Dragon will definitely play a big role. Now go, leave this place and never return. 
Alright, that is all I have for this video. Now, do you suggest future videos and also don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel already as it really helps out and keeps all the videos going. And thanks a lot for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and see you next time.